Coming up on KTVH News at 5. A bill aimed at increasing starting teacher pay advances with strong bipartisan support in the Montana House. Plus... It's always kind of a last minute holiday. Flower and candy shops look to Valentine's Day to boost midwinter business. From Montana's news leader, this is MTN News at 5. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the News at 5. I'm Andy Curtis, and thanks for joining us. A bill meant to increase the starting salaries of new teachers here in Montana was overwhelmingly endorsed Monday by the Montana House. The House voted 97 to 3 for the bill, which is part of Governor Greg Gianforte's agenda. The bill would increase state payments to school districts that agree to increase the starting pay for beginning teachers in their first three years on the job. Base pay for starting teachers would have to be at least $34,000 a year or in larger school districts, at least 70% of their median teacher pay. The bill sponsor, Republican Representative Lou Jones of Conrad, says Montanans' media teach, median teacher pay rather is in the middle among the states, but that we're dead last when it comes to starting teacher pay. He says the bill leaves the choice to local districts and salary negotiators on whether to increase pay for teachers in their first three years on the job. Nothing dictatorial about this bill, just an incentive package to incentivize an increase in the beginning teacher pay. Thus, hopefully, more folks will enter the teaching field, and those that do enter the teaching field will stay in Montana. The bill now heads to the House Appropriations Committee, where members will figure out how the $3 million a year proposal fits into the overall state budget. <music> A federal magistrate judge in Great Falls has granted the U.S. Attorney's Office request to transfer two Helena area brothers accused of taking part in the Capitol riot back in Washington, D.C. Joshua and Jared Hughes made their initial appearance in federal court in Great Falls this morning and were ordered to be detained pending further court proceedings. Prosecutors say the men were among the first 10 rioters to enter the Capitol at that part of the building. They are also alleged to have been part of the mob that confronted Capitol Police Officer Eugene Goodman in one of the most widely shared videos from the riot. Goodman has been called a hero for luring the mob away from the Senate floor while lawmakers were still evacuating. The two brothers are also accused of opening senators' desks and viewing sensitive material on the Senate floor. They face a total of nine charges each. And now with a look at the weather as we start our work week, Chief Meteorologist Curtis Grevenitz. Well, good afternoon, Andy. Good afternoon, everybody. The start of the work week and the start of February. Happy February, everybody. Wanted to start out here with uh, the East Glacier area. Why? Well, it almost hit 50 degrees in East Glacier. That is unbelievable here for the uh, middle of winter. Where is winter? Well, it's coming here. Winter actually and really cold stuff back east and then right up into the northwest part of Canada and Alaska. And watch how this cold air begins to move into parts of the state here Tuesday night into Wednesday. All right, it's going to get cold, but not real Montana winter cold. Not just yet. Thursday gets a little briefly warmer before where you see this really light shade of pink. We're talking well below zero uh, right up there. And some of that starts working down into the state. Friday night and Saturday, 30 below zero, a possibility in northeast Montana as we get into this weekend. Well, that groundhog will hide tomorrow, meaning maybe six more weeks of winter. Cold and getting colder and dust off those snow blowers and shovels. I'll have more on the forecast coming up next. Active cases of COVID-19 and hospitalizations from the virus in Montana continue to decline. As of today, there are about 3,400 active cases. Active hospitalizations are holding steady at just over 100. But four additional deaths have also been reported overnight, bringing the statewide death total to 1,232. And as of today, more than 107,000 total doses of the COVID-19 vaccine have been distributed here in the state with nearly 27,000 Montanans fully immunized to the virus. Now the state also releases the county level vaccine numbers every Monday. In Lewis and Clark County, 8,100 doses have been administered with just under 2,000 people fully immunized. 
Now, numbers are similar in Cascade County with around 8,300 doses given and approximately 1,900 people fully vaccinated. Well, flower shops and candy shops will likely be busy over the next two weeks as people celebrate Valentine's Day. But as MTN's Coulter Anstad explains, thanks to the pandemic, the holiday could keep businesses just as busy this year as last year, despite the holiday falling on Sunday. My Viola Floral Studio in Great Falls wasn't packed Monday, but owner Carrie Johnson was still busy. Our suppliers have told us just be ready. Um, you know, people are still staying at home and they want to send to people they haven't seen for a while. She says under normal circumstances, business would probably be down about 20% with Valentine's Day falling on a Sunday. Not this year, though. Most of the business will come probably next week. Um, it's always kind of a last minute holiday. While the cancellation of weddings and other events due to the pandemic has slowed business a little, luckily the business has been able to adapt. Those two areas are just a small portion of our business. Um, our everyday sales, you know, really keep us going. We invested in a really good website that has really helped us. We have already seen uh, quite a few orders come in. And Stordahl owns To Be Sweet Candy Shop in Conrad. She's looking forward to the holiday rush, especially after last month. People are, are really focused on the gift of giving around Christmas, and so then you go into January and it's like this lull. Regardless of how the rush turns out, she's confident the business will survive the pandemic. It's been getting a lot of love from the community ever since it opened last year. In Great Falls, Coulter Anstat, MTN News. And remember, that's February 14th, if you don't already know. Both business owners say the best advice for ordering flowers or candy for Valentine's Day is get your orders in as early as possible. And the Federal Reserve Bank of Minneapolis Helena Branch is celebrating 100 years of operation today. The Helena Branch of the Federal Reserve Bank opened in 1921. After being destroyed in an earthquake, the second building to house the branch was completed in 1938 on Park Avenue. Employees moved into the current home of the branch on Neal Avenue in 1990. Often referred to as the Banker's Bank, the Federal Reserve System supervises and regulates banks and helps maintain the stability of the industry. Now, the branch also created a center for Indian country development to directly support prosperity of Native nations through actionable research and community collaboration. And when we come back, Chief Meteorologist Curtis Grevenance will have a complete check of your forecast. And later, part two of our series examining the impacts of another environmental executive order by President Joe Biden, his moratorium on oil and gas leasing on federal lands. With Chief Meteorologist Curtis Grevenance. All right, welcome back everybody. Happy February to you all. Look at this here, nice picture from Hayes, uh, nice visibility as well. And how about that temperature? Snow melting with numbers up into the 40s and the 50s uh, here around a lot of the state. Lewistown Divide looking pretty nice in uh, Great Falls. A little cloud cover out there, but still at this hour, 51 degrees. And again, it's February 1st here. Uh, believe it or not, the record 64 happened on this day last year. Yeah, I don't remember that one. Uh, and for Helena, 42 degrees, a uh, little inversion in the Helena Valley area with a northwest wind seven miles per hour. Also, we hit 70, uh, 64 last year and uh, the record low of 41 below set all the way back in 1898. So look at some of these temperatures though. Cup Bank at 51 still. There's Billings at 53. Around Fort Benton and Loma came close to 60 degrees uh, today. Wind speeds, not really a very strong wind out there until you get down around the Livingston area, 22 mile per hour winds. On the radar, a couple of mixed rain and snow showers, more so into eastern Washington and northern Idaho. This is our next storm system that will be coming through later Tuesday, later tomorrow into Wednesday morning here. Uh, some rain showers again. Great to see Southern California, Arizona, southern parts of Utah as well. And let's take a look at a major snowstorm here. One of the biggest storms in about six to ten years uh, for the northeast here. Parts of New Jersey and New York City approaching two feet of snow already. This snow began yesterday morning. 
That's where all the snow is falling here. Uh, back in Montana, quiet night here tonight, a mild night. And again, enjoy it because we've got some much colder air on the way really for Wednesday, but then it's later this week into this weekend that the cold air arrives. Tomorrow morning, some snow up on the Rocky Mountain front. Most of the state dry for most of the day tomorrow. It's later in the afternoon and the evening. We'll have a couple of mixed rain and snow showers come down in the lower elevations here. This is not a big snowmaker, but it will produce some snow through uh, Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. And then Wednesday, just a couple of snow showers, mainly over the mountains here in the western and central part of the state. Snowfall amounts now uh, by the time we get into Tuesday night and Wednesday morning, the little belts, the big belts, uh, Glacier National Park up there around to Lincoln and the Copper Creek Bowls picking up some snow, a couple inches down the divide, a couple inches into the uh, Elkhorn south of Helen, and maybe a few inches up into the Highwoods. This is not a big snowmaker. It's not a tremendously cold front, but this will knock us back down closer to average. Here's the forecast for tonight. These temperatures, the lows are about average uh, for high temperatures this time of year. A little cooler further out to the high line into the 20s. Staying above freezing, melting snow, more melting snow around Lewistown, and we'll be in the 20s around the Helena area tonight. For tomorrow, it's warm once again, well up into the 50s with partly cloudy skies. A little stronger breeze out there, and look at Loma, maybe 60 degrees tomorrow, 61 one in Jordan. Again, we'll have a cold front coming through tomorrow night. That will bring a few mixed rain and snow showers to Helena late, likely here for Groundhog Day. So with some sunshine, it looks like the groundhog will see a shadow. And I'm going to have more on that coming up in weather-wise tonight at 6 o'clock. Some snow showers mainly in the mountains on Wednesday. Thursday night into Friday, here comes some snow. Zero for Helena Friday night. Five for a high on Saturday. A little warmer Sunday into Monday with some more snow. And for Great Falls, from 52 tomorrow to 15 degrees below zero Friday night. Saturday's high of only 10 below zero. And we've got more snow Sunday night into Monday. And again, we'll have more on the Arctic air coming up in the forecast at six. Thanks a lot for that, Curtis. And last week, we took a closer look at the Montana impacts of halting construction of the Keystone XL pipeline in the northeast corner of the states. Today, in the second part of our two part series, MTN chief political reporter Mike Dennison examines the impact of another environmental executive order by President Joe Biden his moratorium on oil and gas leasing on federal lands. Biden's order says no new leases will be issued for oil and gas production on federal lands while the Interior Department reviews the process. Critics have long said the federal government is leasing lands to petroleum producers often at below market prices and favoring oil and gas over other uses for these lands. We have been leasing public lands for oil and gas development like like candy for the last couple years. It's a really good time to take a step back, not just for climate change purposes, but also for water quality purposes. The industry says the move will eliminate jobs and reduce revenue for states. Republican members of our congressional delegation, Representative Matt Rosendale and Senator Steve Daines, say they'll sponsor legislation to reverse Biden's order, legislation not likely to pass. But let's look more closely at the facts and the numbers behind oil and gas leasing on federal lands in Montana and elsewhere. Nationwide, about 20% of U.S. oil production is off federal land. But in Montana, there's not a single operating oil rig on these federal acres. During the Trump administration, the feds offered up 924 parcels covering 469,000 acres of public lands for oil and gas leasing in Montana and North Dakota. Only 40% of those parcels even received bids, and the total payments over four years was about $7 million, half of which goes to the states. In 2020, the total income on these bids was only $600,000 on 46 parcels covering 22,000 acres. A winning bid gives the company 10 years to develop oil and gas on the property. Oil companies with existing federal leases are not affected by the ban and will continue to pay royalties to state and federal governments for any production from federal lands. But, as we said, right now, there's no operating oil wells on federal land in Montana. Alan Olson of the Montana Petroleum Association says the lease ban could harm existing production elsewhere if that drilling on private or state lands needs to expand onto federal property. Are we going to be able to drill even though there's federal 
mineral acreage in there? Are we going to have to find a way of spacing the federal minerals out and bypassing them? But Hedges says oil companies already have thousands of leases that they're not using and that the moratorium won't affect current production much, if at all. This is not going to impact them, um, at least in Montana, because they're not producing or are moving forward with developing these leases anyway. They've been hoarding these leases, but they've been getting these leases for a song, and we should not be selling public lands for a song. Hedges Group and several others also filed suit three weeks ago to block federal oil and gas leases awarded in Montana and North Dakota since 2018. They say federal officials didn't properly consider the impact of continued oil development on groundwater or the climate. The Biden administration says the moratorium is a pause to examine whether the leasing program should be reformed. But environmentalists clearly hope it will lead to less oil and gas production on federal lands. In Helena, Mike Dennison, MTN News. You can see Mike Dennison's full reports on the impacts of halting the Keystone Pipeline and oil and gas leasing on our website, ktvh.com. And coming up next on the News at 5, we'll meet one team of young adults serving with AmeriCorps' National Civilian Community Corps. News Leader, you're watching MTN News at 5. Welcome back, everyone. Thanks for making us part of your Monday. Over 200 young adults from across the nation are departing for their second round of service with AmeriCorps' National Civilian Community Corps. This team has been deployed across the country to help communities bounce back from the COVID-19 pandemic. MTN's Alexio Guayo visited with one of the teams serving in the Helena area. The Helena Habitat for Humanity is constructing four new houses here in Red Fox Meadows, a subdivision in East Helena. The project progressed over the year, but not without challenges in the pandemic. Especially this last year with COVID, uh, we've shut down our volunteer program completely. With no one able to work on the houses, the Helena Habitat looked to the nation's AmeriCorps volunteers to step in. A group of six members arrived in Helena. Our mission is really just to help fill in the gaps, especially since their volunteer program has really, you know, really been hit hard by COVID-19, and so they're really needing the extra work that NCCC can help provide. This isn't the first time the Helena Habitat were visited by AmeriCorps volunteers. In fact, they've hosted multiple teams throughout 2020. Their service has pushed these houses one month ahead of schedule. Meanwhile, this team is also helping the Helena Food Share pack over a thousand meals a week for the community. It definitely adds another layer to our service and makes us more passionate about what we're doing because we understand that these times are hard. It feels much more uh, fulfilling. These AmeriCorps members will be here until April and will bounce back continuously between the Helena Habitat for Humanity and the Helena Food Share. In East Helena, I'm Alexi Guayo, MTN News. And we'll return to finish things up here in just a moment, but first, here's a Lester Holt with a look at what's coming up tonight on the Nightly News. When we welcome our West Coast viewers, we'll tell you about Johnson & Johnson's new COVID vaccine, what the company says about its effectiveness, especially against the dangerous new South Africa variant. Also, I'll be speaking to Dr. Fauci about what it means for speeding up vaccinations when we see you on Nightly News. Montana's news leader. You're watching MTN News at 5. Welcome back, everyone. Wrapping things up tonight with a local senior care center who is giving kids an opportunity to win a prize and bring some smiles to local seniors. The Ivy at Great Falls has two pictures available for kids to color. Residents at the center will judge the colored pictures. The kids whose colors are the ones that they deem the best will get a Valentine's Day gift basket. The center's ad admissions and marketing director says the seniors are excited to see the pictures. It's hard for them not to see their families. It's hard for them not to see all these kids groups come in. So I just think that anything different, you know, cards, Valentine's, anything helps them cheer them up. The staff, you know, looks for any opportunity to help cheer them up. The deadline, the deadline rather, to submit a picture is February 12th. To find out how to get one and how to submit it, read this story on our website. Look at the seven day forecast here. Groundhog Day tomorrow, 52 degrees in Great Falls. Look where the temperatures go though by the end of the week. Look for plummeting temperatures here on Friday, 52 tomorrow, 
15 below Friday night into Saturday morning. Saturday likely below zero for high temperatures across a lot of north central and northeast Montana. It will be colder the farther north and east you go in the state Saturday nights. Northeast Montana up there around Culbertson, Plentywood, Medicine Lake might be down near 40 below zero. For Helena, not quite as cold, but yeah, we've got some cold air on the way. Some areas Friday night down below zero, a high of only five on Saturday and a good several inches of snow likely on Friday. Well, thank you for making us a part of your evening. NBC Nightly News is next.